Like the cockpit of an airplane, Control Panel is where you go to configure the settings of Windows 7. Everything about how Windows runs, including the sounds Windows makes, and the color of your Windows desktop are chosen using Control Panel. Let's enter the cockpit of Windows 7. Go to the Start menu in the bottom left of the screen and choose Control Panel. Control Panel is grouped into several main categories of related tools. The System and Security tab is where you configure the most important settings, such as Windows Firewall and administrative tools. Network and Internet is where you go when you want to connect to the Internet, or if you're having trouble connecting, we can run some tests to troubleshoot the problem. The Hardware and Sound area is where you set up any device that you've connected to your computer, including printers, external cameras, and you can also customize Windows system sounds. The Programs category is where to go if you want to install or remove software. We can also turn on additional built-in Windows software called Features using tools in this area. User Accounts and Family Safety lets you make additional accounts so other people can have their own account to use on your computer. For parents, this includes tools to give you control over what games and websites your children have access to. Appearance and Personalization is where you can replace your Windows desktop background with a picture of your cat or customize other visual options for your Windows experience. The Clock, Language, and Region category includes settings for your local time zone and your preferred language. The Ease of Access Center is where you configure Windows accessibility options. These options improve the Windows experience for users with accessibility issues such as impaired vision or hearing. Notice that if I open the Appearance and Personalization category, you will also see the Ease of Access Center here. There are many cross-references provided for you in Control Panel. Now let's make the individual settings easier to see so we can review the important ones. I'm going to change the Control Panel view to small icons so we can explore each tool individually. The actual listing of tools that you will see on your computer depends on what software has been installed on your computer and whether or not your computer is part of a domain, which would most likely be true if this is a work computer. Administrative Tools contains the programs most commonly used by a network administrator. The programs in here are seldom needed by the average home user. Again, the list of tools you will see varies from computer to computer. If you are a network administrator, you will be using these tools frequently for troubleshooting. But to get the most out of them, you usually need to log in using the administrator account, or your account must be a member of the local administrator's group. If I right-click over a tool, I get the Run as Administrator choice, where I can enter the name and password of an administrator, also called the credentials. This way I can stay logged in as me, and still do administrator stuff when I need to without logging out. Let's look at a few more tools. You'll want to explore every one of these on your own, and a great start would be the Getting Started tool. The Ease of Access tool helps those with visual or other impairments. Windows Magnifier allows you to zoom in on parts of the screen to see it better. The on-screen keyboard lets you use the mouse to type on a virtual keyboard instead of actually typing. And the narrator can read the text on the screen to you or the title bar of each window that you open. High Contrast chooses a color combination that's easy to read. Notice in the Use a Computer Without a Display section, I can configure the narrator settings here. If I go to the Make the Computer Easier to See section, I can also turn on Narrator here as well as Magnifier and High Contrast. There are many cross-references like this in Control Panel. Pay close attention to the options for the keyboard. Instead of pressing the Control, Alt, and Delete keys at the same time, Sticky Keys lets me press each key individually and it will act as if I was holding them down. Toggle Keys makes a noise if I hit Caps Lock, Num Lock, or Control Lock, so I get an audible clue that they're on. Filter Keys lets me adjust how sensitive Windows is when I hold down a key for a period of time. Normally, if I hold a key down, I get repeated entries. With Filter Keys, I can tell Windows to act as if I just pressed each one once and let go. I can also adjust the keyboard so that Windows waits a few seconds after I've pressed a key to actually register the keystroke. This cuts down accidental keystrokes if my fingers brush a key by mistake. I'll let you discover what that feature is called. Now here's your homework assignment for this module.